gonna survive. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Ivan Reitman. You're here. You're finally gonna get your star. You're finally gonna get your star in the Canada's Walk of Fame. What's that? What's it it's really exciting. But way more exciting than yeah, you showed a clip of me getting the Holly, you know, the Hollywood one. Yeah. And that's that's kind of fun, but uh, there's something so special about getting it here in Canada. Well, there's 2,000 in Hollywood. There's a hundred here. So that's a pretty that's a <laughs> yeah, great ratio. Yeah, it's a smaller ratio. group for one <laughs> thing. But no, you know, I I escaped uh, Czechoslovakia with my parents when I was 19, in 1950. We came here penniless. Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't speak the language, and uh, you know, now to sort of be facing this, to have this tribute from the country that took us all in is really an extraordinary moment for us. Are you going to cry? Not right this minute. No, I mean, I, mean, I mean on Saturday, are you going to cry? I probably will cry on Saturday night. Well, I'm a real softy. Well, you know what's interesting about, I mean, your relationship with this country has been, I mean, you've always made movies, always worked with Canadians and all that, but there was a long time when people thought you left Canada, but you always worked with Canadians. That's right. Ghostbusters might as well have been a Canadian film. You know, exactly. And uh, people are always asking me, so what makes Canadians so damn funny? I don't know. <laughs> like, I really I don't, don't know. From Czechoslovakia. You know, I think it has to do with, um, you know, this kind of inferiority complex that uh, a country, even though we're technically larger, we have, there's only 20-something, 5 million of us here next to this other country with 250 million. So there's something about being from a smaller place that makes you more polite and makes you sort of look at things and then you want to sort of get even by making fun. That's, well, no kidding. <laughs> when, you know, when you had this, this string of success, that obviously continues, but there was that, you know, the, the, the meatballs run, you're looking at Stripes, you're looking into Ghostbusters, all those movies that became so big and were so funny. When you're making movies like that old school in your part, do you know, can you get it? Because you hear actors always say they have no idea if the film's any good. Does a, does a producer or a director, do you know? Well, I remember, you don't, you don't often know. You hope. You yeah. pray. The, um, I, but I remember the very first day of shooting of Ghostbusters. It was actually a pre-shoot, and I was standing on the corner of Madison Avenue and 61st Street, mm -hmm. and I saw around the corner came, you know, Dan Aykroyd and Bill Murray and Harold in their outfits, you know, those beige outfits with the proton <laughs> packs. It was the first time, actually, because Bill Murray actually arrived from France that morning, and we threw them into wardrobe. So it was the first time I saw the three of them in their outfits. And here they come down Madison Avenue in there. And there was just something so extraordinary about that image. Mm -hmm. I turned to the sort of script assistant next to me. I said, I think this movie's going to work. <laughs> <laughs> well, you mentioned, so you mentioned Murray uh, and Aykroyd and, and, and Harold Ramis, but Belushi, John Candy, Rick Moranis, Eugene Levy, Andrea Martin, Gilda Radner, Will Ferrell, Luke Wilson, Dave Thomas, Tom Green, Sean William Scott, Andy Dick, okay, maybe not Andy Dick, but Vince Vaughn, all these people who are kings at what they do, queens at what they do. They are so good at comedy. When you meet them and they're young, can you, is it the sort of thing that becomes very apparent? Do you, like, because Bill Murray, a lot of people were surprised when Bill Murray just started to own that character that he is. Um, I, I got very lucky. I, you know, I worked with Harold and Bill and Belushi before Saturday Night Live. I did a show off-Broadway called The National Lampoon Show, which brought all those people together for the very first time. And I remember going in New York, I had just come from Toronto, thinking, wow, these people are really talented. <laughs> I'd never seen anything like it. And, and you get a sense after a while when you're, you're seeing something special in a person. But aside from them all being funny, which is obvious, aside from them all being funny, is there something else that, you, that, that, is, that is a commonality? Well, they, they have a way of taking stage or taking a screen. It's not just that they know how to say something funny. Mm -hmm. There's something about their face where you just have to keep looking at them. You, you, um, you see it with Will Ferrell. You know, you saw it all the way through Saturday Night Live and finally placed in a movie like Old School. He just owned it. Mm -hmm. And it was, the, it was the movie that sort of changed his life, where he went from just being an ordinary comedy star to a superstar. Do you have a script for Old School 2? We're working on one, actually. Yeah. We're, you know, it was pretty easy to get all those actors into the movie the first time. Now. They've all become such huge stars. They don't pay them now. <laughs> well, but here's another thing I wonder, um, with, if you take a look at all the people you worked with, who had to convince whom? Did you have to convince Schwarzenegger to do a comedy, or did Schwarzenegger have to convince you to let him expand? Well, that's a funny story. I met him at a ski lodge, and I didn't know him. He just comes up to me, he says, you're the Ghostbusters guy, right? I said, yeah. He said, you know, I could be a Ghostbuster. <laughs> But he was a 
big action star at this point, right? He had already done Terminator and the Predator, but he had not done anything funny. Yeah. You know, you know, screw with him when he uh, says that. I actually went out to dinner with him and realized he's really smart. He can actually speak. He speaks English. Yeah. <laughs> and very, very well. And he's smart as hell and very, very charming. I mean, he's the governor of California, you yeah. may have heard, and for good reason. Yeah. Uh, so I, just, I thought, you know, he told me he could be funny. I should believe that. And um, <laughs> I actually bumped into Danny DeVito within two weeks of that time. And, you know, in Hollywood, you're always saying, hey, we got to work together. Let's do something. And uh, I started thinking of DeVito and Schwarzenegger together. And uh, within six months, <laughs> the twins idea came uh, about. And that turned out to be a great film. Julius, yours. It was, it was, but it was one of those movies that, that pulled something off that was hard to do. Was Schwarzenegger funny on, on, on the set? Did you have to work that into him? Because comedy is specific, right? Yeah, well, he didn't have to tell jokes. He just had to be honest as an actor. He, you do the same thing you do in a dramatic film, but you try to get, you know, the right situation where the combination of the situation and the character creates comedy. Mm -hmm. I uh, went and saw the opening, uh, the, the opening in Toronto of Trailer Park Boys, the movie, and I've seen, I love movies, I go to movies, you see a lot of uh, right. screenings, premieres. When the cast of Trailer Park Boys walked into the theater, they got a standing ovation, which happens, but then when Leahy and Randy walked in, they got heckled and booed. Well, they're the bad guys. Yeah, but Liam Neeson doesn't get booed when he's the bad guy. They, no. th there was this relationship with the characters. How did you, when you decided to make this film, this Trailer Park Boys movie, like, how did, did it get presented to you, or did you ca call these people? Well, I knew about the Trailer Park Boys. I'm always looking for fresh comedy voices. Mm -hmm. And by then, they were big stars here in Canada, and I always thought they could work outside of Canada as well. And uh, actually, uh, the agents who represent them called me and said, would I be interested in sort of helping them develop into a, into a movie. And we worked very hard together. And I'm very proud of the movie. And now we're trying, we just sold it in, in the States. So I'm hoping that other people other than Canadians mm -hmm. will appreciate the extraordinary humor of the Trailer Park Boys. We, we, don't, we don't own the, uh, the patent on trailer parks. <laughs> they, they are big all over the place, yes, aren't they? Yes, they are. You a, uh, you also big I own a couple, by the Do way. You know, <laughs> <laughs> Hollywood has been good to you, has it not? So you think it'll go over fine there in, in, in America? I hope so. I think the story is, you know, it's a family story, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess technically it is <laughs> in a weird way. Um, the, you had a big weekend with Disturbia. Disturbia was, your, was a movie you worked on right, as well. We produced that, and uh, we had three number ones in a row, which is very unusual. Mm -hmm. And uh, Shia LaBeouf, actually, I met right here in Toronto at the Toronto Film Festival two years ago. We had just bought the script, liked it very much, and it starred this young man. I, I said, you know, I I've got this script for you. You'd be great for it. And it's turned him into a real big movie star. He is good. When Transformers comes out, he is going to have an enormous year. Yeah. It's good to see you, Ivan. Thanks for coming Such on the show. Such a pleasure, George. Right. Ivan Reitman, congratulations on finally getting your star on the Rock of Fred. All right, more to come on the hour tonight, my friends, including this. All right, so much more goodness to come, including our green